on World News Tonight. New territories. Vladimir Putin to host Kremlin event annexing parts of Ukraine as Western nations call it a land grab. Tory pressure. UK Prime Minister Liz Truss defends difficult tax cuts despite market turmoil. Search and rescue. Storm Ian gains hurricane strength and takes new aim as the death toll keeps rising. And it's a mask festival. With South Korea completely scrapping the outdoor mask mandate, festivals are at full blow. This is Other Than Anna World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. Very good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. Now, Russian President Vladimir Putin has declared the independence of the Ukrainian regions of Zaporizhia and Kherson as Russia prepares to formally proclaim the annexation of Ukrainian territories in a major escalation of its seven-month invasion. It's widely expected that Russia will announce on Friday the annexation of four Moscow-controlled regions of Ukraine, representing around 15 percent of Ukraine's total territory. Tomorrow, a ceremony to sign the agreements on the accession of new territories into the Russian Federation will take place in the Grand Kremlin Palace in St. George's Hall. President Vladimir Putin will be presiding over the ceremony and is expected to give a major speech and meet with Moscow-appointed administrators of the Ukrainian regions. This comes as Ukraine and the West have strongly rejected the hastily arranged referendums in the Luhansk, Donetsk, Kherson and Zaporizhia regions held seven months after Russia sent troops into Ukraine as, quote, illegitimate shams. Voting ultimately returned a result in favor of incorporating the areas into Russia. The United States will never, never, never recognize Russia's claims on Ukraine sovereign territory. This so-called referenda was a sham, an absolute sham. The results were manufactured in Moscow. Biden also explained that Washington is working with allies on imposing new sanctions once Russia annexes areas of Ukraine. Meanwhile, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky stressed that Moscow will not get the territories. Russia will not get any new territory from Ukraine. Russia will only join the disaster it has brought to the occupied territory of our country. He also stressed that Russia could avoid the most damaging consequences of its war against Ukraine, but to do so, he explained that President Putin had to be stopped. This comes as the EU announced new sanctions against Moscow, with Finland announcing that it will ban Russian citizens traveling with tourist visas from entering the country. The decision comes on the heels of an increasingly heated debate in the EU on whether Russian citizens should not be permitted to apply for visas or banned from entering the bloc altogether. British Prime Minister Liz Truss stated that she would stick to her controversial plan to reignite economic growth, breaking her silence after nearly a week of financial market chaos triggered by the government's push for huge tax cuts. After being accused of disappearing for almost a week, Liz Truss finally defended her government's mini-budget that has sent the pound into freefall. It wasn't the most full-throated defence. Well, the biggest measure in the mini-budget was the support we have given to people on their energy bills. But also, also we would make sure we deliver the economic growth, we deliver the jobs and opportunities. The Prime Minister also faced a grilling when doing the rounds of regional radio stations on Thursday as public anger raged over tax cuts and increased borrowing that have made investors nervous, prompting the Bank of England to step in and buy British government bonds. Labour leader Keir Starmer on Wednesday called on the Prime Minister to recall Parliament and reverse the mini-budget. Um, the government has lost control of the economy. Uh, this is a self-inflicted wound. Sometimes, you know, the economy um, is in turbulence because of some international event that couldn't be predicted. This is self-inflicted. Truss is likely to face a lot of opposition within her own party ahead of its annual conference which starts on Sunday. So many did agree with Rishi Sunak, who does appear to be somewhat vindicated by recent events and his warnings that unfunded tax cuts would 
would um, be, be damaging for the public finances and the economy at large. And I think certainly there will be a lot of internal pressure on uh, the leadership now within the Conservative Party to change course. When running for the party leadership this summer, Truss had said the Conservatives' economic policy now, would jeopardise their chances of winning the next resolution. election. With polls this week putting Labour 17 points ahead, its biggest lead in 21 years, it would appear events of the past week have not rectified that problem. U.S. President Joe Biden has warned that Hurricane Ian could be the deadliest storm to hit Florida in the state's history. As rescue teams race to save residents trapped by floodwaters, fallen electricity lines and debris. From the air, the devastation in Lee County comes into focus. While on the ground, first responders desperately trying to reach those in distress. At the height of the storm, some first responders risking their own lives. A drowning prevented. Our staff, police, fire, public works, parks got out there and made uh, close to about 200 water rescues. Uh, the guys are getting into, you know, four feet, 10 feet of water, getting people out, getting into shelters. Sanibel and Captiva Islands now cut off from the mainland. Both islands were washed over by storm surge, trapping those who didn't leave. Some houses with their roofs ripped off, others obliterated, boats capsized and grounded. Coast Guard helicopters pulling people to safety. Also sending rescue swimmers to check boats for stranded survivors. Punta Gorda got lashed by Ian's fierce 155 mile per hour winds, but fortunately there was no storm surge. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz set out a $194 billion defensive shield, including a grass price break and a cut in sales tax for the fuel, to protect companies and households from the impact of soaring energy prices. Germany has a new defensive shield for its economy. That's the term for a package of measures set out Thursday, totaling around 200 billion euros, or about $194 billion. Chancellor Olaf Scholz announced the plan. On a different occasion, I once said the measures we were taking are a bang. Here you can say it's a double bang. It's meant as a contribution for energy prices to come down quickly so that everyone notices it and that no one needs to worry when they think about autumn and winter, about Christmas, about next year and about the bills. Europe's biggest economy is preparing for a winter of possible energy shortages. Among the measures is an emergency break for gas and electricity prices. Berlin will also scrap a previously planned gas levy on consumers. To help keep the lights on, two nuclear power stations that were due to close will be allowed to keep operating until the spring. Germany will finance the package with new borrowing and has set aside previous limits on new debt. Schultz says the country is well prepared. We have a powerful economy. We have stable public finances, also thanks to the very careful politics in recent years and the approach we are planning for coming years. The cost of gas has soared in Europe since Russia throttled supplies to the region. That has already claimed corporate casualties, with Germany forced to nationalize gas importer Uniper. French President Emmanuel Macron faces first major strike since re-election as unions oppose pension reforms against soaring prices with several industries demanding higher wages for their employees. Let's cross over to other than a world news special correspondent Chetan Dharmaratha who joins us now from Normandy in France. Chetan, over to you. Yes, Shanali. The French government vowed to push through pension reform by the end of the winter despite opposition from the unions which launched a first major day of strikes. Several unions, including the country's biggest, did not take part, although all of them and left-wing political parties are jeering up for a months-long fight over efforts to raise the pension age. President Macron made raising the retirement age from its current level of 62 one of the key planks of his re-election campaign, arguing that the current system was unsustainable and too expensive. The biggest of around 200 protests nationwide drew up to 40,000 people in Paris, according to the organizers, while around 4,000 people marched in the southern city of Marseille. Over to you, Shanali. 
All right, thank you. That was at the Dirana World News Special Correspondent Chetan Adharmarathan reporting from Normandy in France. Let's go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more World News. Welcome back. Now, just after hours, U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris visited the demilitarized zone separating the two Koreas. North Korea launched missiles once again. The provocation comes as naval forces from South Korea, U.S. and Japan hold a trilateral military exercise in the East Sea. For the third time in just five days, North Korea fired missiles once again toward waters east of the Korean Peninsula. The launch follows the firing of two short-range ballistic missiles a day earlier, and one on Sunday. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff said Thursday evening that it detected two short-range ballistic missiles between 8.48 p.m. and 8.57 p.m., launched from the Suncheon region in South Pyongyang province. The military said the missiles flew around 350 kilometers at an altitude of some 50 kilometers, at five times the speed of sound. The missiles were reportedly fired from a transporter erector launcher and hit an uninhabited island called Air Island, just like the ones fired on Wednesday. Following the launch, South Korea's National Security Council held an emergency meeting and stressed that the recent situation regarding the series of ballistic missile launches is serious. It vowed to strengthen combined defense readiness with the U.S., while being ready for any additional launches, such as the regime's submarine launch missiles. The latest action from Pyongyang came a day ahead of a trilateral anti-submarine warfare exercise between South Korea, U.S. and Japan in the East Sea that's been planned to better detect and counter North Korean submarines. It also came as Seoul and Washington wrapped up their four-day bilateral drill on Thursday involving a U.S. nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, the USS Ronald Reagan. Thursday's move appears to have been carried out in protest against these military drills and also against the U.S. vice president's visit to Seoul. Both Greece and Turkey have exchanged threats after President Erdogan said that Greece was sending armored vehicles to the island of Lesbos and Samos close to Turkey. It's with great fanfare that the Greek Prime Minister attended the naming ceremony of a new warship, Lahakos. The goal was to send a clear message to Turkey after numerous days of tensions and threats between both nations over Greek military buildup on Samos and Lesbos Islands. <laughs> History has taught that whoever violates borders is punished. There is no place for imperial visions in the 21st century and would-be local bullies have no place. In response to Ankara's accusations of Greece sending military vehicles to the Aegean islands, Athens alleged Turkey conducted illegal military drills near its borders. Greece's borders are blue and not grey. Greece and Turkey have feuded for years over maritime borders in the Aegean and East Mediterranean seas. Tech heavyweights Apple and Nvidia slumped more than 4%. The Nasdaq sank to near its lowest level of 2022, while the S&P 500 touched nearly two years lows. Wall Street sank Thursday on renewed fears the Federal Reserve's aggressive fight against inflation could hobble the U.S. economy. And as investors fretted about a rout in foreign currencies and global debt markets, after a brief respite provided by the Bank of England's emergency intervention a day earlier wore off. The Dow dropped a percent and a half, the S&P 500 fell more than 2 percent, while the Nasdaq lost 2.8 percent, sinking to near its lowest level of 2022, set in mid-June. Liz Miller is president of Summit Place Financial Advisors. Just as U.S. investors are completely comfortable with the Fed's strategy, uh, there's now this concern that the rest of the world is not following on. So it's a real concern about the resolve of European central banks to fight inflation and particularly the UK and what that how that might spread to others. Heavyweights Apple and Nvidia both lost more than 4% amid a rout in tech stocks. Meta platforms ended lower after Bloomberg reported the Facebook owner froze hiring and warned employees of more downsizing to come. Shares of CarMax plummeted after the used car retailer missed expectations for second quarter results hurt by consumers cutting spending amid inflation 
rising interest rates, and higher car prices. Meanwhile, shares of automakers GM, Ford, and the most valuable car company Tesla all tumbled on Thursday. And airlines fell on canceled or delayed trips after Hurricane Ian hit Florida's Gulf Coast with catastrophic force, with American, United, and Delta each losing about 3% or more. Protests continued in several cities across Iran against the death of a young woman in police custody. State and social media reported as a human rights group said that at least 83 people had been killed in nearly two weeks of demonstrations. It's a significant show of solidarity in the patriarchal country that's been rocked by a series of anti-government protests. Men are taking to Iran's streets in solidarity with the women who are demonstrating after 22-year-old Mossa Amini was killed in the custody of the country's morality police on September 16th. Her cousin says her death has opened the doors to widespread unrest. What is happening in Kurdistan and everywhere else in Iran is universal anger against the Islamic Republic's regime, against the dictatorship. Amini's death sparked the most significant outpouring of anger with Iran's ruling system in more than a decade. Iranian women chanting death to the dictator, and calling for the end of the Iranian Republic's conservative rule. Still, some men refuse to envisage their country as one where women are not second to men. I'm a man who was born and raised in a third world country. My demands might not be the same as women's demands. I'm not that open-minded. But women, as individuals, have their own rights. They have their demands and are asking for them. As a human being, as long as they don't break the norms of traditional society, their wishes should be fulfilled. Pro-government rallies have taken place in several cities across Iran. Some demonstrators calling for a decisive response to the protesters by the country's ruling system. Iran's president warned he will not accept chaos in the country. Welcome back and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. A UN tribunal in The Hague opened the genocide trial of the Rwanda businessman captured two years ago after decades on the run, with judges saying the hearing must go on despite the suspect's decision to boycott it from his jail cell. Sudan's public prosecution launched legal proceedings against a prominent newspaper and a bar association, triggering complaints that the authorities are trying to restrict basic freedoms nearly a year after the coup. Landslide in floodings in Vietnam's central provinces triggered by Typhoon Noru have killed two people in Vietnam and disrupted the livelihoods of thousands of people. The world's first cloned Arctic wolf born in a Beijing's lab made its public debut at the Harbin Polar Land in northern China. Chinese President Xi Jinping led senior government officials including Premier Li Keqiang at a Martyrs Day celebration in Beijing's Tiananmen Square. And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again on Monday for more news around the globe. And in case you missed to watch any of the stories we aired tonight, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. As we leave you tonight, we take a look at a unique traditional mask dance festival in South Korea. Stay safe and have a good night.